Hi, it's the Tax Geek, and I'm back with more of your taxes oversimplified. Today, let's take a look at the American Opportunity Credit, which is one of two tax credits available for higher education expenses. The American Opportunity Credit can provide a tax credit of up to $2,500 for higher education expenses. $1,000 of the credit is refundable, which means you can still claim part of the credit even if you have little or no tax liability. The American Opportunity Credit came into being as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 and replaced an earlier, less generous HOPE credit. Although the credit was intended to be temporary, it proved to be very popular and made a permanent part of the tax code in 2015. To claim the credit, you need to have three eligibles. You need an eligible student, eligible expenses, and an eligible institution. An eligible student must not have completed four years of post-secondary education. Only four American Opportunity Credits may be claimed per student. The student must be enrolled on at least a half-time basis in a degree or certificate program. And the student must not have been convicted of a felony drug offense. Eligible expenses include tuition, fees, books and equipment that are required for enrollment. These expenses must be paid for either out of pocket or with student loans. They must not be paid by any sort of tax-free scholarships or assistance. Room, board, and travel are not eligible expenses. Finally, an eligible institution is any institution of higher learning that participates in the federal financial aid program. This includes not only most colleges and universities, but many trade schools as well. The credit is claimed by whomever claims the student's exemption, regardless of who actually pays the expenses. Here are some quick examples. Robert and Laura claim their son Richard as their dependent and pay his education expenses out of pocket. Robert and Laura can claim the American Opportunity Credit. Now let's say Robert and Laura claim their son Richard as their dependent, but Rob's uncle Buddy pays for Richard's education expenses. Robert and Laura still claim the American Opportunity Credit, not Uncle Buddy. If Robert and Laura are divorced and Laura claims their son Michael as a dependent since Michael lives with her, Laura still gets to claim the education credit, even if Robert pays Michael's education expenses. Let's look at how the credit is calculated. The credit is available on the first $4,000 of eligible expenses, and is 100% of the first $2,000 in expenses, and 25% of the next $2,000, for a maximum credit of $2,500. The credit is then split into the non-refundable and refundable portions. 60% of the credit is non-refundable, and 40% is refundable. Here are some examples of how the credit is calculated. Robert and Laura have a joint income of $80,000 and pay $25,000 in eligible expenses for their dependent son Richard. The credit takes 100% of the first $2,000 in expenses and 25% of the next $2,000 for a total credit of $2,500. 60% of the credit, or $1,500, is non-refundable, and since Robert and Laura have a tax liability of $5,732, they are entitled to the entire amount, which is added to the $1,000 refundable portion for a total credit of $2,500. Now let's suppose Robert and Laura's out-of-pocket expenses were only $3,500. In this case, the credit will be 100% of the first $2,000, plus 25% of the next $1,500, or $375. The total credit is thus $2,375. 60% of that amount, or $1,475, is non-refundable, which is still less than their tax liability so they can claim the entire amount. $950 would be the refundable portion of the credit. But what if Robert and Laura only had income of $40,000, but had eligible expenses of $5,000? The total credit would be $2,500, but the $1,500 non-refundable portion would be limited to their $1,018 tax liability. 
Add that to the $1,000 refundable portion for a total credit of $2,018. Now, if Laura were raising Richard on her own and her income were only $21,000, her $5,000 in eligible expenses would create a potential $2,500 credit. But since she would have no tax liability, her credit would be limited to the $1,000 refundable portion. There is no limit on how many American Opportunity Credits you can claim on any tax return. So if Robert and Laura had their children, Richard, Sally, and Robert Jr. all in college, they could claim up to $7,500 in American Opportunity Credit, assuming they had sufficient eligible expenses and tax liability. Like most credits, the American Opportunity Credit phases out at higher levels of adjusted gross income. Here are the phase-out ranges for the various filing statuses. And, like many other credits, the American Opportunity Credit is not available to married couples who file separately. Education expenses are reported to the student on Form 1098-T. This form gives information on both the institution and the student. The most important boxes on this form are Box 1, Amount Paid for Tuition and Fees, and Box 5, Scholarships. The scholarships must be subtracted from the tuition paid to arrive at eligible expenses. Also note the two check boxes, one indicating half-time enrollment and another indicating graduate study. If this box is checked, the student is not eligible for the American Opportunity Credit. Additional expenses for books and equipment should be substantiated with receipts. The credit is calculated on Form 8863 Education Credits. Page 1 of this form applies any adjusted gross income phase-outs to the credit. Page 2 of the 8863 form gives information on the educational institution the student attended, answers eligibility questions, and calculates the credit. A separate page 2 must be completed for each student for whom the credit is claimed. From page 1 of Form 8863, the amount on Line 8 carries directly to Line 29 of Form 1040. The amount on Line 19 carries to Line 3 of Schedule 3 and then carries to line 20 of Form 1040. As always, there are additional details involved in claiming this credit. Additional information and resources are given in the video description below. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Please share this video with anyone who would find it useful. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment in the space below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of your taxes oversimplified.